What's happening guys? Matt Cichlid Dojo. Back with another update. Today, as you can see, is on the Red Tiger Motoguensis. So a uh, collection point for these guys is Rio Motagua or Rio Matagua. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. But um, quite a bit have, I've actually tried with these and uh, was not successful many times trying to trying to get the group going and pairing out. And uh, it stems back a little bit from the mix and the quantity of uh, these guys that I received. Um, it was very limited as far as how many were available. And I initially, I initially got eight, eight out of here. And, you know, they weren't fry. They're were a little bit bigger, including one um, pretty much larger male that I received. And I tried, you know, actually going to the quarantine phase, I had them in a 60 gallon. I lost uh, two really smaller ones and may have just been that those were both females, I'm not sure. They were actually a little bit beat up from the packaging uh, and they didn't last very long. And then growing them out, the f I believe five, six remaining, I think six, uh, it was kind of clear if you look at some of my earlier videos that I had mostly males. I wasn't sure how many females. I thought one at least, hoping for maybe a second. It ended up not happening. And so, you know, that's it's always a little risky. Whenever I grow out a new species with fry, I always try to start with a, a pretty decent sized group uh, to increase my chances. My, my preference would be, you know, 12, 15 minimum. And, uh, you know, then that gives me good chances for both sexes also. Uh, you know, it lets me get rid of some of the bigger ones if I see some of the smaller, you know, males that I really like and, and can move on. Kind of kind of what I did with my Wildcat Fest day, starting out with, I think, 17 of them. I ended up getting rid of most of the big males and uh, I saw some more potential in some of the smaller males. and. So getting that mini allowed me to do that, but uh, with these motas in that case, I essentially had five uh, in the group and it looked like only one female and the female was the smallest. I tried grouping them together thinking they might pair out. You know, in the past I've done the moda thing and I've had pairs at really small sizes, much smaller than you can see this pair forming here. and. I think it part of the group dynamic is what held that back a little bit longer. And, uh, you know, I had to pull the female multiple times. She was just not, uh, I guess, didn't have really the confidence to fight back and I guess kind of prove herself, I like to think, to stand up to what might be a dominant male. Also, it would take the male, right, who wants to cooperate there and pair up with the female. So. It just wasn't happening. I think two or three times I had to remove the female. She got a little beat up and I just didn't want to risk it. And ultimately I, I moved them into the 180 gallon here, as you can see them in right now. And I had that big male and it still wasn't working. And uh, so I think maybe the size difference from the female being the smallest and then that large male being around seven inches, I, you know, I pulled that big male and put him aside and, you know, my buddy was really interested in picking up one. So he got the, he got to pick up that male, shipped him out actually this morning. And then that left me with four smaller males, but still, as you can see, size difference versus the female, I think it ended up being perfect. And, and so as you can see here in the video, you see this uh, one male, there's two his size. I'd probably say he's around five and a half inches, maybe six. And the female's probably around that three and a half, four inch size. And I'm really liking this male who's, you know, really enjoying this large tank size for one, but he's showing his dominance. 
We got a little slight nuchal hump built in and I'm definitely interested in that, seeing that through. Um, and uh, as you can see, he's pairing up with this female. And so stick to the end here because I'm definitely gonna show um, you know, more and I'm also gonna make, a, make an announcement uh, at the end, like I always try to do in my YouTube videos, uh, reward those people who follow these, you know, as my primary video source. And so I'll mention something here at the end. But Pear's doing really good, you know, and uh, as soon as I changed that group dynamic and allowed that to happen, removed that big male, uh, it didn't take long before, you know, they decided to spawn in the pot and it's, uh, the same pot that's been in this tank, you may have seen that little 45 degree angled, uh, you know, top portion right there on the left. And, uh, you know, I've actually had a lot of people ask about where they can get those type of pots. I believe they're called Fallen Terracotta Pots. I purchased them on Amazon multiple times. And uh, I've, I've purchased uh, one similar size to that one you just saw. I think it's around the $30 range. I also purchased them in sets where you'd have a small and a medium or a medium and a large. And uh, so if you're interested in those, look on Amazon. I also found, uh, found them occasionally at a buddy's pottery place who, who got me some of those, but I think they were special orders. So anyways, you know, I keep getting those questions in a lot of these videos because that's primarily the, the pot uh, that I like to use. But uh, Pear's doing good and uh, You'll see here uh, at the end of the video, their fry, their first batch. But before we go to that, uh, I do have two to three males in here uh, in that four and a half to five and a half inch range, five inch range that I'm gonna have to get rid of. So please go ahead and message me first come first serve. And uh, if you're interested in getting those, also some of these fry will be available down the road. So I'm excited to get back into that. So. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the quick update here, guys. Until next one, bye now.